Hi, this is Orville Johnson back with you for jamplay.com and I'm starting a new batch of lessons uh, studying bluegrass flat picking. That's the style that you might recognize by uh, some of its great, its great purveyors, some of the great artists that play this style like Doc Watson, uh, Tony Rice, Norman Blake, uh, Dan Crary, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of people that have played this style, but those are a few of the guys. Oh, Clarence White, how could I forget him? Uh, some of the pioneers of the style. And so what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to start off with a lesson mainly about the techniques that we need to be able to have under our fingers and under our pick so that we can play this style. And then I'm going to teach you a series of fiddle tunes. That's one of the, the, common, uh, the common currency of bluegrass flat pickers whenever they uh, sit down to jam in Colorado or in California or in Canada or in England or wherever they sit down to play, uh, one of the first things that they do is start picking out some of the some of the old fiddle tunes. And there's a sort of a repertoire of those that you know a lot of people know certain common tunes. So I'm going to teach you some of those tunes so that you'll be able to not only will you be able to uh, you know get this technique happening for you, but then you'll have some tunes to play when you sit down with your pals and want to jam on some of this flat picking stuff. So let's start out with uh, a couple of points of technique. Let's look at our right hand first. Uh, we're going to use a lot of what is called alternating picking. I described this in uh, one of my beginner's lessons. If you want to you know, check back uh, in one of my earlier series, I, I described it, but I want to go into a little more detail for this purpose. Um, so what alternating picking uh, consists of is downstrokes and upstrokes with your pick. And you want to use these downstrokes and upstrokes in a way that lends a lot of efficiency to your picking. Because one of the things that happens, you know, if you get into picking these kind of bluegrass and country fiddle tunes, some, some people are going to want to play them fast. Uh, I'm not going to play them real fast for you here, you know, as we learn them. But uh, some people will want to play them at a sprightly tempo. And if you're going to keep up with the song as it's going at a quick tempo, you're going to have to make use of every motion that you make. You can't really have a lot of wasted motion. So that means when your pick is going down, you want it to be picking a note. And when it's coming back up, you want it to be picking a note. And kind of the way this will, will break down, at least in the beginning, in the early stages of alternating picking, uh, is the downstrokes are going to fall on down beats of the music and the upstrokes are going to fall on up beats. So that's a general rule. It's not going to happen that way, you know, every single time. It will kind of depend in some places on the way we're phrasing the melody, but just as a general rule, the downstrokes are on downbeats, and if you tap your foot uh, when you play, uh, you probably tap on downbeats. Most people do. So, so if that's the case, you know your pick should be going down about the same time that your foot's going down. That's one way to think about it. Uh, but let's let's take a look at a couple of scales that you can use to practice this. And I want to show you two scales: one in G and one in C, because these two positions, G and C, are going to be two positions that we use a lot in this particular style. Uh, you'll find that a lot of these fiddle tunes, like there are a lot of them that are in G and are in C, but then there are a lot of them that are in also in A and D. And so what the guitar players do uh, to be able to play that way and still play in their favored positions of G and C is slap a capo on the second fret. And I'll be doing that in some of the tunes that I teach you. Uh, so that then when you're playing G shapes and G scales, what look like G scales, if you have the capo on the second fret, then the sound that's coming out of your guitar is actually in the key of A. So when the fiddle player wants to play his fiddle tune in the key of A, but you want to play 
your G positions, you just put the capo on the second fret and then everything just works out fine. So I'll talk more about that later. But uh, let's just look at these two scales. I want to look at a major scale in G. So let's find the notes to start with. Here's how it sounds. So that's a two octave major scale in the key of G. We're starting on a G note, the low G note, then open A, then here's B, C note on the fifth string of the third fret, then open note D, then E, and you have to reach up here to the fourth fret to get an F sharp. Then you have the open G string again. So we've gone through one octave, we're starting into the second octave. So open G, then play A note on the second fret, then open B string, C note, D note, open E string, F sharp, and there's your G again. So we're going to use those notes to begin with. And the way that I would like you to play this, you know, for when you get started, just play through it a couple times, just to get used to the notes. And I'll, I'll describe what fingers I'd like you to use too, but, uh, and you can see it on the video, of course, but uh, just kind of go up and down it a couple of times with me. Now, what I'd like you to do, once you get used to uh, just going up and down it in whatever manner you can accomplish that, I want you to now play that scale using alternating picking. So that means we're going to start with a down stroke, then the next stroke on your open A string is going to be up, then down on B, up on C, down on D, up on E, down on F sharp, up on G, then down on A, up on B, down on C, up on D, down on the open E, up on F sharp, and then down on G. So what you're doing there is the whole thing is alternating, going down, up, down, up, down, up, starting with a downstroke. So now I'm going to play that for you slowly and take a look at my picking hand so that you can see how these strokes lay out on the guitar. So I'm going to play it slowly for you. And I'm going to go back down the scale and I'm going to start with a downstroke and do the same pattern with my right hand, but the notes are going to go down instead of up. Okay, now work on that a little bit. Try to get it going just a little bit faster than that. And this is a good exercise to practice with your metronome. You do have a metronome, don't you? I'm sure you do. Uh, so you can set it at a you know moderate tempo. Just uh, once again, as you always do when you're when you're playing with a metronome, make sure that you have it set at a tempo that you can actually play the thing that you're trying to play. You know, set it at a place where you can play the thing you're trying to play with no mistakes, and then only gradually speed up from there. So uh, practice that with your metronome. So that's a, that's a two octave uh, major scale in the key of G. 
And now I'd like you to, I'd like to do the same thing with a scale in C. So we'll look at our C chord. This scale is going to be a little bit truncated. It's not going to be a full two octave scale because I'm not going to move it up the neck. But uh, here's how it's going to sound. So the distance that I'm playing there is I'm playing one full octave. And then I'm continuing up the scale to the fifth of the scale, that G note. So this scale, we're playing an octave and a fifth worth of notes. And we're just doing that for the convenience sake of kind of keeping it down here on the first three frets so you don't have to jump around a lot. And so, once again, here's how this scale uh, goes up. It starts on the fifth string, that's your C note. Then the open D, then E, F, natural, then the open G string, A note on that string, open B string, C note, D note, then open E, F, and G. So here they are again. Just try, like we did with the G scale, just, you know, play it any way that you can to start with, just to get your fingers used to, used to moving along those notes, along that pattern. And then, once you kind of get them under your fingers, now let's try the same thing that we did with the G scale of playing that scale with alternating picking, starting with a downstroke. So, so your picking pattern is totally down up. There's no, no, uh, no kinks in it. It's down up all the way, starting with a downstroke. So look at my picking hand while I do this for you. sped it up a little bit for you. But key thing is the thing that we're trying to work on here is getting your right hand to feel comfortable playing the down up picking and the place that you're going to have a problem that when people start doing this the place that they always have a little problem is when they cross strings. Like it's pretty easy for most people to just go down up down up on the same string. You know if Uh, you know, you get that pattern going on one string, and that, that doesn't seem too daunting. But uh, if you're playing a pattern that goes across strings, a lot of people will feel that when they change to another string, they should start with a downstroke. So, for instance, in this first, the first few notes of the C scale that we just played, like this, just using those notes, some people will think that what they should do is play that first C note with a downstroke and then play the next string, the open D, with a downstroke and then play an upstroke after that. But uh, to get the type of picking that I'm talking about here, you have to, even when you cross strings, like using those three notes again for an example, I play the C note with a downstroke and then when I play that open D string, I need to play an upstroke and then a downstroke on the E and an upstroke on the F so that I, you know, maintain my pattern and so that my downstrokes keep falling on the downbeat. And one of the things that this does for you, you know, I'm not saying that there's never a time when you will want to change strings by you know, using a downstroke as you change, because there are certain 
situations in music that call for that. And you know, when we when we run across some of those, I'll point it out to you. But you really need to get this this manner of alternating down up picking ingrained in your right hand because one of the other things it 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 helps you with besides making your your movement way more efficient is it really helps your groove uh, you know when you listen to a good flat picker uh, one of the things that they're trying to imitate is the way a fiddle player can you know sort of maintain the groove you know the rhythmic pulse of the tune by his bow strokes you know when you a lot of good fiddlers you know you can listen to them play by themselves you know without any instruments accompanying them and you still feel the groove and you feel the pulse because they the way that they handle the bow um, kind of uh, enunciates that rhythmic pulse and we want to do the same thing or a similar thing with our picking hand with our flat pick we want to feel the groove as we play and so that's something that that this down up picking really helps you with so work on that uh, using those two scales and then once you've accomplished that once you feel like you're going along pretty well that you can play those two scales and uh, with alternating picking in time with a metronome and you really got it going then I want to add one other uh, little complication for you or uh, I guess a, a challenge for you to improve your playing take it another step is to play these scales in a, a manner that we call playing a scale in thirds and so what I mean by that uh, just if you don't know anything about music theory and you know roots thirds and fifths and all that sort of thing you might want to go back and look at uh, in one of my beginners series I go through uh, all of that basic music theory but just in a nutshell uh, so I can explain to you uh, even if you don't know this stuff what I mean by playing a scale in thirds when we play a major scale we uh, give those those letter names, the letter names of those notes I just played are G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. But we also give those letter names number names. We call them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then this one, we don't call that 8, it's really, we call it 1 again. So we really give a, the, that scale 7 uh, distinct numbers one two three four five six seven one again so when I'm playing the scale in thirds it means that I'm starting on a note of the scale then I'm going up a third above that so that means in this case I've gone G A B and then I play the note I started with again. So I have this little phrase, structure of the phrase is going one, two, three, one. And then I start with the next note of the scale. So I go two, three, four, two. So you see I'm starting on each note of the scale going up a third and then I'm playing the note that I started with so here's how it would sound I'll play it for you slowly if I play this G scale that we just learned if I play it in thirds So once again, what I did there was I used the major scale, I started, I played a phrase uh, that starts on a particular note of the scale, goes up a third, so I go like three notes, and then I play the note I started on again. And then after I complete that four note phrase, I start the next four note phrase on the next note of the scale. 
So hope that's clear. Uh, so let me do it for you one more time here in G and then we'll do it in C. So I'll try to do it a little bit. Well, I'll do it slowly one time and then I'll do it a little faster. So. Okay, and now a little bit, a little quicker. So that's playing a scale in thirds in the key of G. And uh, the last little thing is, remember, the point of this is with your picking hand to play that all with alternating down up strokes. So let me play it for you one more time and look at my picking hand and you know I'm even going to exaggerate my picking one time just so you can really see my hand moving up up and down. You know normally when I am playing in this style you know my right hand doesn't move real uh, in, a, in any kind of exaggerated manner because once again I'm trying to play with um, the least amount of wasted motion. So, but I'm going to exaggerate for you this time just so you can see it. So here's that scale one more time with my, my hand doing a, doing a big down up this time. So let's do that same thing with our C scale. So let's go back to our C scale that we, we have all dutifully learned by now and we're able to play it just kind of in single strokes going up using our down up alternating picking. So now let's try the same thing in thirds with this. So I'll just play it for you so you hear how it sounds. Here it is a little faster. Okay, so work on those things. Uh, alternating picking, two octave G scale, uh, octave and a fifth C scale. Uh, get your down up picking really moving and um, clean and clear. And the one other thing that this helps you with in your playing is the coordination between your picking hand and your fretting hand. Because the other element uh, in having economic motion or you know least amount of wasted motion is having your fingers of your left hand pressing the string down at the exact moment that your pick is hitting it. And that's something that you'll notice when you look, when you see a good flat picker play too, there's a very seamless uh, motion, you know, between the two hands, they're like perfectly coordinated. And so that's something that, you know, working on this scale, these two scale patterns in the manner I described, and uh, also paying attention to you know, you're down up picking and trying to, you know, use the least motion. That's the thing, you know, like a lot of people are impressed when they see a guitar player play who, you know, swings his arms around a lot and sticks his tongue out and uh, kind of looks like he's really working hard when he's playing. You know, for some people, that is an exciting visual. You know, for me, what makes me excited when I watch a guitar play is actually seeing a guitar player whose hands barely move at all and incredible music pours out. So, I mean, that's just, that could be just me, I guess, but um, I think that, I think it's actually pretty cool 
to see people play that have such control and such accuracy in their playing that you could have too if you uh, spend a little time working on these scales and preparing yourself to learn a bunch of these uh, bluegrass flat picking style fiddle tunes that I'm going to show you. So take a look at the rest of the things in the series and I'll see you, uh, see you back at jamplay.com real soon.